Hi, welcome to Just Off The Highway. In 2022, I had the pleasure to introduce you to the South African Air Force Spitfire 5518, the fighter plane that won't quit. She gave faithful service and then narrowly escaped being chopped up for scrap. She was trapped on a pole for decades and after 30 years, she was freed and restored to fly, only to be almost totally destroyed in a crash. She had to wait as more years passed and a group of enthusiasts gathered with the dream to see South Africa's last flying Spitfire take to the sky again and the determination to make it happen. Now there's a link on the screen and just below the video that'll take you to the previous episode of Just Off The Highway about Spitfire 5518 and it'll give you an idea of the scale of the task ahead. It's almost impossible. Almost. Because today I have good news to share with you. I was lucky to have been invited to a small celebration marking a major achievement and the beginning of a new phase in the process. Not only the restoration of this iconic aircraft, but also the building of a vividly realistic simulator and an almost three quarter size model with a military history all of its own that'll become a fully interactive exhibit. And the occasion was the official roof wetting of the hangar which is specifically designated to be the place where 5518 will be reborn. I managed to corner a few of the people involved to talk about their part in the project, which is not quite as hard as building a Spitfire from wreckage, but also not that simple because these guys are on a mission and they prefer getting things done to talking to me. After much to and fro we decided to set the Spitfire up as a sub-project of the Friends of the SAP Museum of Victoria Park. I actually was here the unfortunate day when it crashed. The family's always been in aviation, brother-in-laws and everything else in the Air Force. So whenever we get together, we talk aircraft. Spitfire's always been my favorite plane ever since I was a schoolboy. I was born near Castle Bromwich, the big factory of Spitfire II in the war, and they were still flying when I was a boy. My dad took me to see the movie Reach for the Sky, the story of Douglas Bader, the legless airman in 1955 when I was nine or 10, and I've been hooked on Spitfires ever since. I had the privilege of flying one of the few twins in England in 2005, which was the, the greatest thrill of my flying life. Now, General John Bain and Dawn and I went to the same Bible study group. So one evening after coffee, I said, what are you going to do about the Spitfire? So he looked at me and he got this mischievous look in his uh, face. And he said, why don't, why don't you do something about it if you're so passionate about it? And then from there, he introduced me to Colonel Rama Iyer, whose family were present today. The late Colonel Rama Iyer, also an incredible man. And he helped us get the project going. Well, it's, it, it is a low back Spitfire as opposed to the normal high back. And they are very rare, and this Spitfire, in fact, is the last of its model. Well, this Spitfire is reputed to be the only one of its type left in the world. It's a Mark 9E with a clipped wing and a, a teardrop canopy. Uh, so it's a very special aircraft, and um, it's the only one that has a potential to fly again in Africa. It's a wonderful sight to hear that iconic Merlin engine start up. It's a, it's a fantastic sound, a fantastic thrill for everybody. That little air show. Wonderful that there are fellow people out there who feel like I do, and that there are wonderful people like Ian who drive a, a project like this with their heart and soul, and all the people that are associated with them. It's just heartwarming. Well, I think you might have seen today the number of people that are here, whether they are technical people, or their wives and children. We've got quite a bunch of very involved people and people that are very keen on the project. And hopefully once they get going, we can show them what uh, the result is as soon as we can. It's going to take a year or two to get fully completed, but it's going to start soon. The next step is obviously uh, to sort out all the drawings and see that we've got a full set. But in the small steps, uh, we're looking at doing the seat next, the next small project. The main focus at the moment is to get the hangar sorted out. And once we've got the hangar, then 
we can look at deriveting this space, workspace, and we can move. At the moment, it's difficult to work in a container. And I'm very keen to assist Ian Grace and his wonderful team, both supporters, engineers, and uh, all those who are putting their weight behind this amazing project. I'm not sure if I'll live to see her fly again, but you never know. Okay, the first is we need to complete the hangar because we need a secure working environment. Uh, thereafter, once we've got the hangar completed, we'll move the Spitfire in here. And from there on, it'll go into a jig where it'll be, the fuselage will be disassembled and, it'll, uh, and then the parts will be evaluated to what we can reuse and what has to be replaced. Um, the baby spit was, this is the baby spit here, it's a 5.8 five scale and it was built by Peter Noble from the Rhodesian Air Force. He was wing commander and after his death it was donated by his wife to the museum. Now, unfortunately during transport to South Africa it fell and the undercarriage was broken. And my project at the moment is trying to get this baby spit back onto its wheels. There's no drawings, there's only photographs and sketches. So it is a lovely puzzle to get this back into what it was, especially seeing it was the wings were covered after the undercarriage was put in. So now to get everything back in again, in whatever form it is, is quite a challenge. Are you manufacturing stuff or salvaging? There is unfortunately nothing to salvage. It has been lost. And um, I'm making little models to see how it fits. And then once we've got that, then we will manufacture in steel or aluminium, depending on what we want. And then have the Peter Noble Spitfire again as a exhibition. Yes. Well, as from a kid, I was enthralled by the Spitfire. Every time one could see one, it was like a romantic um, association with an iconic aircraft that was built in the Second World War. When my time came, time came and I was able to buy the Spitfire kit, I was the first person to buy it. It was the first kit out of Lowly from America. And I had a great amount of time, fun, building the Spitfire. However, the, the wings were never delivered, so it became a static project, which I shelved. And when I was approached by Ian for the Spitfire Association, I was very, very happy to pass my project on. And I'm very, very happy that it will continue with its life as a, a simulator project for other people to climb in and feel what it was like 90 years ago to fly a Spitfire. I think it's fantastic. It'll start making money for the guys, and I think if we can get a nice simulator, people can, and young kids can come and fly the sim and say they've flown in a Spitfire simulator. Well, uh, you know, the Spitfire is, is that, that elliptical wing is obviously the Spitfire and the aircraft that uh, attracts the most attention in World War II fighters, especially from the British. Army. That gives me a lot of pride, a lot of pride. And not only for, um, let's say, never mind personal things, but pride in that we are actually doing this, not for ourselves, but also for our kids and for the country and for everybody else to enjoy. Make it makes me incredible how many people, young and old, aviators, enthusiasts, and just very generous benefactors, Al, who will support this project. And it's good to hear that the Air Force is getting involved. Well, to, to me, it's great because the, uh, with the, um, what you see in here is a lot of young people coming through and, and they are, they show a passion in aviation. And, with it, it's that, and that is also one of the things we'll be trying to do is that this is a historical project and also an educational project that young people are getting involved because we won't be for, around forever and the young people are the ones who are going to have to take, oh, take the baton over from us. And when you see the people here today, that is all in progress there. 
This one won't, but I really hope that the Saf Spitfire will. She deserves to be back in there, which was she was built for. That's her place in life. Well, that will be determined by the Air Force, but we want to get a restored to flying condition. So with the hope that it will be fl uh, flown again. So Take a few years, but it's going to work. It's a brave and crazy dream, and I have no doubt that they're going to do it. And you can also get involved. Follow the Spitfire Restoration Project on social media. Visit the museum at Swartkop Air Force Base on flying days. Make a donation. Buy some merch. It can be as small as a mug. Or uh, even a keyring. Or as large as a custom Ford Mustang. And if you enjoy Just Off The Highway, give this video a like. Also remember to subscribe so that you don't miss an episode. And you can support me on Buy Me A Coffee or with the thanks button just below this video. It really makes a difference to the reach of this channel. I look forward to seeing you soon, just off the highway.